So let's copy it over and get the other side of our handle. Alright, so I'm just going to select that handle. Alright, we'll go into the uh, front viewport. Okay, and I'm just going to delete the, the uh, smooth modifier temporarily. And we'll throw a symmetry on here. Alright, so into the modify list, down to symmetry. There it is. Alright, and we'll just flip the axis here. Alright, so it looks like it needs to be on the Z, and I'm just going to uh, open up the rollout for symmetry up here and click on mirror. Okay, and we'll just move the mirror over on the X. Alright, just so the uh, center edges are lined up like that. Okay, and we can exit mirror now and just close this up. Alright, let's take a look. Alright, so that should work, I think, for our handle. Alright, so let's collapse this to edible poly. Alright, there's one last thing we need to do. Um, we don't need this one anymore. I'm just going to close it. If we look on this reference picture, you can see the seam here pretty easily. Okay, so I think we should add a seam to this. Alright, so let's go back to uh, edge. Alright, just going to select that center edge there, and we'll do a loop on it. Alright, so it goes all the way around. Okay, and let's just chamfer that edge. Just a little bit. Maybe 0.15 and OK. And then I'm just going to select one of the little edges between those two new ones and do a ring. Control click polygon. Alright, just to get our poly strip all the way around selected. Alright, and I think we'll just extrude this in a bit to get our little crack. Okay, so let's open up extrude. Alright, we want to be on local normal here. And we'll just take the height down to a negative amount just to punch it in. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just want to be careful here on the uh, corner. Try to zoom in. All right. We don't want to go too high on this, else these are going to cross. All right, as you can see, start crossing. All right, so just back it off. All right, maybe uh, 0 0.1 negative should be fine and okay. And then we're going to want to chamfer these edges as well. So let's control click edge. All right, to convert to an edge selection, and I'm just going to go into the front view. Alright, we'll zoom in here at the top. And I'm just going to deselect the horizontal ones, so let's hold Alt and just drag down the center of our new little seam. Alright, just get all these guys. Again, just make sure you don't have back facing turn on when you do this, else it won't get the ones on the other side. Alright, so we'll just go all the way down until we get to the bottom. Okay, and just drag through these guys. Alright, just like that. And then I'm going to uh, control click one of these ones on the top edge. Alright, looks like I'm having a bit of a display problem. Alright, we'll get one on the other side as well. Okay, and we'll do a loop. Alright, just so we have all the loops all the way around. And then we'll chamfer this a really tiny amount. Alright, so chamfer, and we'll take it down really small. Alright, doesn't have to be much, just like that maybe, so 0 0.02 and OK. Alright, so let's exit edge, just hit Z, zoom out, okay, and let's just add our smooth modifier to it one more time. Okay, and auto smooth. Alright, so the last thing we need to do is just make some copies of our little bolt pieces here and put them on the other side. Okay, so let's select all three of those guys. There we go, alright, holding control, get all three of them. Okay, and let's just go into the top view. Alright, I'm just going to go up to here to rotate, and I'm also going to turn on my angle snaps here. Alright, turn that on. And what that does, if you're not familiar with it, is it just snaps your rotation in increments of 5 degrees. Okay, so it'll make it easier for us to actually rotate 180. Alright, so with those on, let's hit uh, Shift, and just rotate a copy 180 degrees clockwise. Alright, and we'll say Copy and OK. And then I'm just going to drag these guys over to the other side. Right, kind of match up what I have over there, so that looks fairly close. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Alright, so I think the handle's finally done. Right, apologies, I know it took uh, forever. It's a little trickier than I thought it was. Okay, so if it's done, let's save so we don't have to uh, redo any of that stuff if something goes wrong. Alright, so another copy. 
Alright, so I'm just going to select all this stuff here and just throw my uh, gray shader on it. And just hit OK. Alright. So that doesn't look too bad. We're fairly close to the reference. Okay, so let's exit isolation mode. Alright, hit Z. And we'll just take a look here. Alright, I'm just going to select the handle and hit Z again just to center my view to it. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. I think we're pretty close to the width we want. Alright, and let's just make sure it's centered properly. You can see it's not. Okay, so I'm just going to select the handle. I'm just go in here. I'm just going to do this manually, I think, because I want to move all the bolts with it. Okay, so I'm just going to drag a selection around the entire thing. Alright, deselect that breech piece. Alright, just want to make sure you have the handle and all six bolts. Okay, and I'm just going to move them over so it's lined up with the center of our barrel. Alright, right there. Okay. Right, just like that, so that's not looking too bad. Alright, so we still have one more to go. So I think we'll do that next. Alright, let's just save again. Always a good idea to save often. Alright, so let's do the other handle. And uh, don't worry, we're not going to make it from scratch. I'm just going to try to reuse this handle to get this one over here. Okay, so let's select it. And we'll go to move, and I'm just going to hold shift and just drag a copy over to where the other one is. Alright, kind of position it. Alright, for this one I'm just going to change the name to front grip. Okay, and copy and OK. Alright, so if we look on our reference picture again, this one's just flat at the top. Alright, so that works out good for us. That'll make it actually a little easier. So let's delete the, the uh, smooth modifier. Okay, and in edit poly, I'm just going to go to polygon. All right, and we'll zoom in here, and I'm just going to delete the whole top half of this. All right, so we'll grab all those polys above this line. All right, so 4,159, and delete. Get rid of those. Okay, and then we'll just go to vertex and grab all the top verts. And I'm just going to move them down so they match the picture a bit better. All right, maybe right there. Okay. And then also, if you look on here, you can see that the back of the uh, handle's not flat. All right, you can see here too; it kind of goes out a bit at the bottom. All right, so let's just zoom in here at the bottom and uh, just hold Control and get all these corner verts on the outside. All right, we don't want to pull any of our uh, grip pieces over because the grip's still straight on this. Okay, so just the corner guys there. All right, looks like 160, and we'll just move them over to the left on the X. Alright, just like that. And we can exit vertex. Alright, so just like that. And let's take a look and see how it is. Okay, so there's our other handle. Alright, so that wasn't quite as hard. Alright, so we're also going to still probably need to steal our little pin pieces off of this one and move them over there, so let's do that. So I'm just going to grab, I think I'll take all six of them. All right, so I'll just collect them all, holding control. All right, and we'll just shift drag a copy over of all six. So let's hold shift, drag on the Y over here. And I'll just say OK. And let's go in the left view. Right, so I'm going to try to center them with the handle. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to move them down. Check our reference again. Okay, so I'm going to put the bottom one right about there, and then I'm going to hold Alt and just drag through and deselect the two bottom ones. And we'll just move these guys down a little farther. Right, until about the center, maybe right there. Alt, deselect those guys, and just pull these last two down. Alright, so just like that. Let's take a look. Alright, so that should be fine for the front handle. Alright, so we're slowly getting there. Let's do another save now that we have that done. Alright, so I think we can move on and uh, start working on this piece up here where the trigger is. Uh, before we do that though, let's uh, close in the top of our handle here so it's not a giant hole. 
Alright, so let's just select that. And I'm going to go over to the uh, Modify Panel to Border and just grab the top border. Okay, and we'll just cap it to close it in. Alright, and we might want to chamfer this edge while we're at it, so let's control click edge to convert to an edge selection, and we'll open up chamfer. Alright, I'm going to do uh, 0.15 on this, because I think that's what I did on these guys. Alright, looks about right, so we'll say OK, and we'll exit edge. And you're not going to see most of this uh, when we're done anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Alright, we'll leave it like that, and then let's uh, throw the smooth modifier back on it. Alright, so into the modify list, down to smooth. And again, I'm going to use auto smooth. Um, if you want to take a little more time, though, you might want to actually assign some uh, smoothing groups to this piece, uh, and probably this handle as well. All right, just because it's going to give you a better result uh, when you're done. But just for the sake of speed in this tutorial, I'm just going to use auto smoothing because it's quicker. Okay. But yeah, that might be something you want, might want to try to do. All right, so we'll say it's okay for the handle, and let's move on and start doing this piece up here. All right, so I'm just going to go into the left view. Alright, and uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see because our picture is really lousy, but uh, let's just look at our reference. Alright, so it's kind of a you know a weird shape, and there's a lot of holes in it. So we could try to do that with edible poly, but you know if we wanted the holes to be nice and round, we'd probably have to turbo smooth it, and that would probably take quite a while to get all quadded up and you know have everything right. So I think uh, we'll just do it out of the spline because it's probably going to be the fastest way. Okay, so. Let's go to the gray panel and into shapes. And I'm just going to choose line here, right? And we'll just basically trace the outline of it. Okay, so we'll start up here where the barrel is, and I'm just going to click to start our line. All right, we'll go straight down. All right, and if uh, you're having a problem keeping your line straight, you can always hold down Shift. All right, that'll snap it to a, a straight line. Okay, so we'll go down just past the corner here on the picture and click, and we'll go straight across this way. Alright, maybe click there, and then we'll go down to the top of the handle. Click, hold down shift, go across. Click again, and we'll go straight up here, holding shift. Alright, and then out to the end of this piece. And straight up again. And back in. And I'm going to try to match it up with this one down here if I can. And maybe there. And shift, and all the way up to the top. And then out and up to the barrel. Okay, and click again. And all the way back to where we started. And click on that vert, and it'll say, do you want to close by and say yeah? Alright, it's so just like that. Okay, and we'll have to do the same thing with the inside of the hole here. So let's uh, start up here on the corner. And we'll just do the same thing. Alright, I'm going to try to keep the width of the trigger guard you know, somewhat even all the way around, even if it doesn't match the picture. It's kind of hard to tell what this looks like in here, but I'm just going to go straight up to maybe there. Alright, and straight out. And straight up. And across. And again, we'll say yeah. Alright, so just like that. Alright, and this one didn't come out very straight, so I'm just going to go into the modify panel to vertex and just straighten this uh, corner out here. Alright, just like that. We can exit the uh, vertex. I'm just going to change my color here quickly to something we can see a little easier. Alright, so basically just the shape we want. Okay, and let's take another look here. Alright, a lot of these corners are, you know, fairly rounded over. Okay, so let's select our uh, first line there on the outside, and we'll go to vertex again and down in the rollout, and just click on fillet. Alright, and I'm just going to start here, and I'm just going to click and drag up on the mouse on this vert. Alright, we'll just round the corner over just a bit, and then same with down here, we'll do this guy. Alright, I'm going to leave these two, and we'll grab both these guys at the same time. Alright, just round them out a bit. All right, I'm going to leave these two here. I'm just going to zoom in here for a sec. Alright, I might have made this a little too wide, so let's uh, go to move, and I'm just going to grab this vert and just move it down a bit. And this one, up a bit. Okay. And you can also use the handles to uh, alter your curve. Right, so maybe just like that, and let's go up here. And I think these ones are all uh, hard corners on there. All right, so that's fine for that line. Okay, we'll exit uh, vertex and just grab our other one there on the inside of the trigger hole and do the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to go to vertex. All right, you can also do that uh, 
up here in the rollout if you don't want to be uh, moving your panel up and down all the time. Alright, so we'll go to Vertex, down to Filet, turn that on, and do the same thing. Just round this guy out. Try to match the uh, outer curve we have. And this one. Alright, we'll do quite a bit on that one, and a little bit on these guys. Alright, quite a bit on that one. And again, you know, if you're not right on the picture, it doesn't really matter. Alright, that's probably uh, good enough, so let's turn off Vertex. Alright, so I'm just going to take another look here on the reference. Alright, so we got all these little screw holes here. Alright, looks like there's five of them. Uh, this is probably the safety right here. I'm just going to take a look at the other side of it. I don't think they're exactly the same. Alright, so here's the other side. Alright, so same layout for the screws, but this, this side actually has the head. Alright, so the holes are quite a bit bigger than on this side. So we'll have to make two different size holes um, on either side. Alright, it does look like that is the safety there. Alright, so let's worry about this side first because that's the side uh, we're looking at in the viewport. Okay, and it also has screws up here where these bracket pieces come around. Alright, so We'll put a screw on those, uh, or at least a head, so we don't really need to bother putting a hole for them on uh, this piece. Okay, so we'll just leave those guys off and we'll worry about these five and the safety. Alright, so let's minimize that. Okay, so let's go back to the create panel. Alright, and I'm just going to go back into shapes and choose a circle. Alright, you can kind of see where they might go. Uh, there, I'm just going to stick this up in the corner so I can just look at it while we do this. Alright, so we'll just drag one out up here. Alright, these ones don't have to be too big. Alright, so we'll just get one in there and let's just tweak the size. I'm gonna see what one would look like. Alright, they're fairly small. Okay, so I think I'll do one on the radius for these, these ones here. Alright, and then we'll just copy this a couple of times. Okay, so I'm gonna shift drag a copy over here. We'll do a copy and okay. And just position it. Maybe right there. Okay, and then we also need one over here. Alright, and then again down here. And one more over by the trigger guard. Okay. Alright, we're also going to need one for the safety hole, so let's just use this. I'm just going to shift drag a copy up here. You can kind of see the blob of where that actually is. Alright, and I'm just going to scale this one up just so it's a bit bigger. Okay, so we'll scale the triangle. just like that. Alright, I think that'll be close enough. Alright, so let's minimize that. And now that we have the layout and everything that we want on there, I'm just going to select all the lines. Okay, and just go into isolation mode. Alt-Q. Alright, just so we can see what we're doing a little easier. Alright, so let's attach this all together. So I'm just going to select the outer uh, border there. Go back to the modify panel and just hit attach and just click on each of these. Just so it's all one line, and we'll turn that off. Alright, so before we go any further, let's just do a save. Let's jump out to perspective. Alright, just hit Z. Okay, so let's exit the isolation mode now and just get this thing lined up properly uh, with our uh, handle. Okay, so let's just use the align tool again. Alright, so I'm just going to click on that and click on the handle. Alright, and again we want X, Y, and Z ticked in both pivot points. And OK. Alright, you can see it moved it down, so let's go into the left view and just move it back up into place. Alright, so I'll just drag it up just to the bottom of the barrel. Alright, and just over to the left of it. Alright, maybe right there. I'm just going to try to center it on the handle. Alright. Alright, so I think we'll build this in two pieces, two different sides to it, so I'm just going to uh, save a copy of uh, our line here, it's just for later, so let's hold down shift and just drag a copy back on the X, I'll say copy and OK, and then I'm just going to right click and just hide that, hide selection. Alright, so let's select our line here, okay, so we're going to have to add some thickness to it, and again, we could use either the extrude modifier or the shell modifier, uh, I think I'll just use the uh, shell modifier. Alright, so let's go into the modify list, down to shell. Alright, we'll put one on here. Alright, we got to figure out how wide it needs to be. Uh, just take another look. Alright, it looks pretty much like it's as wide as the uh, handle down here. Alright. 
So I'm just going to uh, raise the outline amount here up a bit. All right, let's just do it maybe seven or so. Okay, because we are going to put the other piece on there, on the other side. All right, so we'll go seven, and if we have to adjust it later, we can. All right, and I'm just going to go into isolation mode again, Alt Q, and change the color on this guy. So before we start actually uh, modifying this, I'm just going to save one more time just to be safe. Alright, you never can save too often. Right, let's convert to Edible Poly. Okay. And when we do that, we're going to get these weird cuts in here again, these weird edges. Alright, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're working with splines and you convert it to an Edible Poly, um, it'll add these edges. All right, and that's just because it needs to have at least one edge connecting an inner hole to the outside edge. Alright, so if we went to edge and tried to remove one, by hitting control backspace, it won't let us do it. Okay, but you can still change the layout of them or where they're at. Okay, so if you don't want to have them all crisscrossing all over the place like this, because um, it's kind of nasty looking, you can just go to cut and then, you know, start maybe on one of these verts here, just pick one and just cut up to the outside edge, right? Just like that. Okay, and then if we go to edge now and grab this guy, control backspace it'll let us remove it. Okay, so I might just do that quickly on a few of these just to uh, make it a little neater. Uh, if you don't want to bother, you don't have to because, you know, there's not really any necessary reason to do that uh, just besides, uh, you know, what your mesh is going to look like. Okay. Right, do another one there. Get rid of this guy. Control backspace. Alright, and I might just connect these two together in the center. Okay, and you want to go vert to vert here if you can. Right, so just cut this one across this way. Try to get rid of this big ugly one here. Control backspace. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this one too. Just like that. Okay, so it's just a little neater. Alright, these guys down here, same thing. I think I might do one across this way, so start here. I'm just going to go across to the side. Alright, we'll get rid of this one here. And then, uh, let's just clean up this one while we're at it. Alright, so back to cut, and I'm just going to cut from one vert just up to one of these verts. Okay, and we'll get rid of this guy. Control backspace. Alright, just like that. Okay, and let's exit edge. Alright, so let's grab a look at our reference. Alright, that's the wrong side. Let's look at this one. Alright, so we're going to have to cut some holes into this, obviously, for our trigger. We'll need to have a hole for that. And uh, for the hammer here, you can't really see it, but I think it ends right about there. Okay, I'm just going to check out one of my other reference pictures and see if I can get a better angle of it. Alright, so I got this one up here. All right, I know this one looks like it would make a you know a far better blueprint than the one we're using. Uh, the only reason I chose not to use it was just because it's quite bent. All right, and a lot of these pieces are bent. All right, and it's also on a bit of a weird angle, so that's why I chose not to use this. All right, so let's look in here. Okay, so yeah, you can see the opening for the hammer piece. All right, and then it's got uh, this thing here. No idea what that's called, but. Uh, it looks like there's a recess in the top for that to go into. Alright, so let's cut some holes. All right, so I'm going to go back to the modify panel to edge. Alright, and let's do the hole in the side here first. All right. Before I do that though, I'm just going to go to polygon and just select the huge face on the back and delete it. Okay, because we don't need it because it's going to be on the inside. Alright, so that'll make it a little easier. We'll get rid of that and then let's go to edge. And we'll just grab an edge here on the outside and do a ring. And do a connect. Alright, I think I'm going to leave this uh, to one side and no pinch, no slide, and OK. Alright, I think we'll just you know push these in here, and then when we get our other piece on the other side, uh, it'll match up and create a little slot for the hammer, OK? And we're going to need one up in the top here too, so I'm just going to go to uh, cut one more time, and just cut from this corner up to the top edge. Right, try to do it somewhat straight. Alright, we could probably do it right across to the inner edge too. Ok, 
Okay, just like that. Alright, let's go back to edge. I'm just going to grab one of these and do a ring. And we'll do a connect. Alright, so let's do uh, two segments and just pinch them apart. Take one more look here. Alright, so it looks to me like there's a little bit of an edge there. And then another edge. Okay, so... I think we'll just do 80 or so on the pinch, no slide, and okay. Alright, just take one more look here. Right, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it looks like. Um, just thinking if I need to add another edge. Alright, maybe we will. So let's uh, just grab one of these guys here and do a ring. And I'm going to do another connect here. Alright, this time we'll do one segment, no pinch, no slide, and OK. Alright, so just like that. OK, and let's go to Polygon. Alright, and we'll start here. I'm just going to select uh, that one there. Check one more time. Alright, so it looks like the hole doesn't go all the way to the top. OK, so let's add one more edge across here before we uh, punch it in. Right, select those four edges and do a connect one segment and I'm just going to slide it up closer to the top. Alright, we'll leave a little bit of space. Alright, so ne say negative 75 and OK. And now let's go to Polygon and just grab these guys here. Alright, I might stop right about there. So these three go around to the back here so we can see. And let's extrude. Alright, I want to do a negative amount. Alright, I'm just going to do this on group and uh, let's just do maybe uh, negative 2.5 or so on the height and OK. Alright, just like that. And then I'm going to select these guys here on the inside and just delete them because we won't need them. Alright, so delete. Alright, it looks a little bent so let's go into the uh, left view wireframe F3 and just straighten out our hole here. You can see it's kind of wacky. Alright, so let's go to vertex and just uh, grab these guys here. Alright, I think we'll straighten them out so let's go down to the make planer options and just hit X just so they're all straight and even, and then we'll just move them up a little bit on the Y. Alright, just to even everything out so it's kind of straight. Alright, most of the stuff's going to be covered up uh, when we get the hammer in there, but uh, just try to be as neat as we can. Alright, and uh, you can see we've got a weird shading problem again, so... I'm just going to add a smooth modifier to this. Alright, smooth. And I'm not going to turn anything on or tick anything, I'm just going to put it on and then collapse it back to edible poly. All right, just to get rid of the problem. All right, so just like that, and we might delete these ones after. I'm not sure if we need to. Okay, so let's do the hole up in the top. All right, we'll grab both these polys and same thing. Extrude a negative 2.5 and group and OK. All right, just like that, and let's grab this one and delete it. All right. So just like that, and now we'll have to go around to the uh, trigger hole here and do the same thing. Alright, so let's go to Edge and just uh, grab one of these guys and do a ring. Connect. Alright, and this time I'm just going to do one no pinch, no slide, and OK. Alright, just take a look at our reference here. Alright, can't tell really what that looks like from that angle. Let's check this one out. Alright, so it looks like the hole's maybe right there. I can't really see it very good. It's pretty dark. And then it looks like it probably has a hole in the top of this piece for the uh, top of the trigger. Alright, so let's add another couple edges here. Alright, I'm just going to select these three. Do a connect. One segment. I'm just going to slide it down just a bit. Alright, for the bottom of our trigger hole. That might be okay right there. I'll say negative 50 and okay. And then let's cut one across these three at the top. Connect, alright, and I'm just going to move it out a bit, maybe. Alright, not too far, maybe 30 on the slide, and okay. And then we'll just repeat the process. Alright, we'll select all the guys here. Alright, those nine, that will make up our hole, and then we'll just extrude again. Okay, and this time we're going to do local normal. Alright, negative 2.5, and okay. Alright, and let's just delete these guys on the inside. Alright, delete. Okay, we can exit polygon. Alright.
right, so just so we'll have a bit of a recess to put our uh, trigger in and our uh, other pieces. All right, so just like that, and let's do another save before we go any farther.